So calls are already being started for an inquiry into this whole mess when it's when it's all over to try and find out why the UK failed so badly. But we already know why the UK failed so badly. Um, it's the Tories. Plain and simple. Uh, any investigation into what the government was up to, what it was doing, will find a complete litany of failures into the government. It would be absolutely unbelievable, but there you have it. So, this is a public inquiry into the UK's coronavirus response would find a litany of failures. Will the inevitable public inquiry into the UK's COVID-19 response pin the blame on a few scapegoats? I hope not. Britain's failure to move quickly and effectively is a symptom of a more comprehensive system failure. More than three months after the virus first appeared in Wuhan, England and Wales still lack the necessary testing capacity and surveillance infrastructure to shut down the epidemic. Crucial frontline workers are still doing their jobs without adequate personal protective equipment. Public Health England seems still unable to increase the daily number of tests that lie within, uh, within our European neighbours have managed to achieve. As other countries acted swiftly to contain the epidemic, the UK appears indecisive and delayed, uh, shifting, uh, shifting late in the day from a controversial herd immunity strategy to a lockdown. History won't look too kindly on Britain's response. We must ask at least a five far at least a five far reaching questions. How our health system deals with a pandemic? First, who's in charge? Many actors have been involved in delivering a response to coronavirus. Downing Street and its advisors, COBRA, the Department of Health and Social Care, NHS England, the PHSE, its Scottish, Northern Ireland and Welsh counterparts, the National Institute for Health Research, the Chief Medical Officer Chris Whiteley, the Chief Scientific Advisor Sir Patrick Valance, and the Scientific Advisory Group for Emergencies UK SAGE. And the coordination appears chaotic. I rely, I've, been, I've been reliably told that leaders across those various bodies don't often know what each other is doing. The second question concerns history. The UK's haphazard coronavirus response wasn't just a result of chaotic planning. The groundwork was laid years ago. During the last decade, funding for public health has been fragmented and downgraded. In 2013, the Lansley reforms created a PHSE uh, in a new executive agency with the Department of Health and Social Care that was separate from the NHS. Its mission was to protect and improve the nation's health in order to address, in order to address inequalities. Its funding came from local authority budgets, as local authorities suffered the sharp end of austerity. Funding for the PHSE, uh, PHE has stagnated. Spending on the last public health grant in 2019 to 2020 was 850 million lower in real terms than the initial allocations for it in 2015 and 16. Today, the repercussions for fragmentation and the un underfunding are clear. Scaling up the COVID-19 testing requires a community surveillance system that integrates the PHSE local outbreak management teams with the NHS primary care facilities and labor laboratories. It, on its March 3rd 19, uh, COVID-19 action plan, the PHSE assured us that once a case had been detected, our public health agencies used tried and tested procedures for rapid testing, monitoring and isolation of close contacts, with the aim of preventing a further spread. By all accounts, this didn't happen at scale. On the 12th of March, PHSC stopped all community testing as part of the government's delayed strategy, instead of focusing on efforts of patients and health workers. The third question is political. This epidemic has tested the reigning political emphasis on market mechanics and public and private partnership, and found it wanting. During a national epidemic, our system of outsourced providers and internal mar markets simply doesn't work. As one senior British doctor close to the COVID-19 crisis organisation uh, told me, the chaos of the UK's response has reflected the wholesale destruction of a coordinated and focused state sector. Outsourcing, delegation of powers, internal markets have made a single response impossible. It has affected every aspect of policy. 
The fourth question concerns the pool of experts advising the government. The Lancer stated that the UK, <coughs> the UK sage, um, compromises the uh, comprises the best uh, of UK British science with extensive uh, ex extensive expertise in virologically, in virologically, mathematical modelling and behavioural science. But for an overall crisis response, UK sage was too narrow in its scope. It needed public health health science, logistics, IT, social citizen science, communications and uh, community mobilisation experts at the table. Government funding for health has always been a strong bias towards clinical medicine. According to a 2018 report from Nesta, 94% of all health research funds are spent on clinical medic medicine, drugs and biosciences. Only 6% is divided between psychology and behavioural sciences and public and community health. Despite an epidemic, public health is vital. But perhaps the gravest problem with the UK's response is that it didn't act sooner. The 12th of March decision to stop community testing meant the government effectively gave up, gave up on containing the spread of the epidemic. In South Korea, regional data and maps about the coronavirus deaths are available online. The virus test data shows that just 2 out of 18 regions account for 84% of cases. The UK doesn't even have a reliable region data bank because it collected too little community information. Where South Korea and China use digital apps to assist cl uh, collecting, collecting and tracking clinical uh, de deterioration and quarantine compliance, NHS Direct has simply recorded data since March of 18th on 111 calls and online assessments. This data is not linked to community case surveillance or quarantine. Maybe it is already too late for the day uh, of the government to remedy these mistakes. Pandemics move fast. If you don't get ahead of, the ahead of the virus, it spreads quickly. The government stuck stubbornly to its policy to flatten the curve, although through social distancing alone, despite the evidence of uh, epidemic suppression through testing in South Korea, Singapore, Hong Kong, uh, Hong Kong, Hong Kong, China, Taiwan, and Germany, which have all recorded lower death rates. On the 23rd of, 23rd of March, Paul Rumer, a noted uh, Nobel Prize winning economist, wrote a blog post about the models for social distancing and community mass testing. If we contrast a non-specific non policy for social distance with a targeted policy guided by frequent testing, how much more disruptive is a non-specific policy? Answer, way more disruptive. Through an, uh, through an economic, uh, though an, though, bleh, sorry, though an, though an economy can survive, um, uh, can survive with 10% of its population in isolation, it can't survive when, when that figure is, uh, is 50 or above. Without community surveillance and testing in place to detect new outbreaks and isolate so individuals, once uh, the current lockdown is lifted, we face a hugely damaging national lockdowns all over again. Any self-respecting COBRA, UK SAGE or pandemic crisis team should have realised the importance of mass testing from the onset and never allowed this to happen. And, oh, 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 I am waiting for the fallout for this because we are at the point where even... Um, like the right wing press are all over Boris and the Tories for their failures on this. And they are going to get raked over the coals. Well and truly for this. Um, you could potentially see mass demonstrations, um, calls for another ref general, uh, general election, uh, demands that Boris um, leave his post. So my bet on whether Boris would survive four years in his, this term um, suddenly looks like it might become worth betting on <laughs> so <laughs> there you go